Welcome to the presentation on refraction and Snell's law. First, let's have a look at the ripple tank. So, what we're looking at here being drawn is the ripple tank. A beam bounces up and down and sends ripples through water. And you put something in the way to make the water shallower, and the ripples will change direction. And the amount of direction change you get is dependent on the amount of change in speed. In shallow water, ripples move slower than in deep water. Now, it has been found that the same thing is true for light. For instance, if light goes from air to water, uh, you can measure the speed of light in air and in water, and you find that you also get a change in direction. And both of these circumstances follow the law, which is called Snell's law, which is that the, um, if you measure the angle of incidence that the ray strikes the boundary at, uh, the sine of that angle divided by the sine of the angle of refraction will be equal to what we call the refractive index, or it's also equal to the velocity in medium 1 divided by the velocity in medium 2. Here's an example. Find the refractive index in the following examples. That's what you've been asked to do. So my advice would be, every single time you see the question, write the entire formula. Whether you think you need it or not, just write everything. So it is sine i over sine r is equal to v1 over v2 is equal to mu. Okay, now what's the question asking me for? It's asking me for the refractive index, which is this. And what have I got? I don't have the velocities. I do have the angles, so I've got sine i and sine r. So I'm just going to use this part of the equation this time. Sine i divided by sine r is equal to and all I have to do is take the sine of 39, divide it by the sine of 25. And if you get your calculator out, and you should do this with me, check that you know how to use the sine buttons on your calculator. Students often get confused, and different calculator makes give, uh, have slightly different ways of doing this. So just make sure you know what it is to take the sine of something. Okay, and when I do this, I get an answer of... 1.48. Notice there's no units because you're dividing angles by angles, same units they get cancelled out. It's just a ratio. So that is your answer for this question. Okay, next example. Find the refractive index again. Okay, again, I don't care how many times you do it, every single time you do the questions, write the entire formula out. Now the ray is coming from air to glass, so the angle of incidence this time will be... 21 and the angle of refraction is 14. So uh, just taking the sine of 21 and dividing it by the sine of 14 should give me the answer, which is 1.48. It doesn't matter what angle of incidence it is uh, or angle of refraction. If it's the same mediums, like from air to glass, you'll always get the same refractive index. Okay, so find refractive index from glass to air, sine i over sine r and it's v1 over v2 and it's equal to mu and again you're probably getting bored of me writing this formula I don't care I recommend you write the formula every time I want refractive index this time the light is going this way and coming out there so the angle of incidence is actually this side 37 sine 37 divided by sine 66 equals and I'm getting an answer of 0. and if I round it up 66 six, okay so now you've noticed I've gone from air to glass and I've got these numbers of let's just go back 1.48 1.48 when we're going from air to glass but going from glass to air I've got 0. 0.66 these numbers actually do have a relation to each other if I was to take the inverse, for instance, of 1.48, which just means do 1 divided by 1.48. And I'm just doing that now, 1 divided by 1.48. And I get, well, 0. Point, there will be a bit of a rounding error here, but I've got 0. 0.6. 8 on my, on my calculator. Okay, so a small rounding error, but basically taking the inverse of this number, if you're going from air to glass, if you want the refractive index from glass to air going the opposite way, going this way, 
you can just take the inverse of the refractive index you've got for going from air to glass, which just means doing one over that number. And it works both ways. For instance, this is the refractive index going from glass to air. If I want the other way going from, that's going from glass to air, if I want the other way going from air to glass, I can just take the inverse of 0 0.66, in other words, 1 divided by 0 0.66, and I should get about 1.48. There's, there's going to be rounding errors because these numbers have got lots of uh, decimal places afterwards. So, and I'm getting 1.52. Okay. So again, if you've been given a number for the refractive index and they tell you it's from glass to air, but you need it going from air to glass, you can always take the inverse of it. All right, let's look at another example. Find the velocity of the wave in the glass. So I'm looking this time for this velocity. Before you get worried about anything, just write the formula. So just subbing the numbers in for what I've got, this is the angle of instance because the, the wave is going this way. Okay, so it's sine um, 37 divided by sine 66 should be equal to... Now it's, the velocity in the glass I've got, I'm looking for, now this is medium 1 this time, so it's V1 that's missing in this formula, and I've been given the velocity in the air, which is 3 meters per second. And I could write mu in there, okay, but basically, what I can see from this is I've got this chunk here, that thing's equal to that thing, and I'm just missing this one number. Now, depending on how you rearrange equations, you could cross multiply to make V1 the subject of the equation, or to get closer towards that, so I'll just do that bit first. V1 times sine 66 equals sine uh, 3, sorry, 3 sine 37, okay? And then to get V1 on its own, I can divide both sides by sine 66. Sine 66 cancels this side, and this side is sine 66 now. So basically, V1 should be equal to 3 times sine 37 over sine 66. So we'll just check that on the calculator. Okay, so I've got a velocity here of 1.97, which I'm going to round up to 2 meters per second. Okay, so this velocity, 2 meters per second. So we've seen an example there of using the full Snell's law to find missing numbers. Let's continue with our examples. Find the refractive index from glass to air. Okay? So from glass to air, 2 meters per second to 3 meters per second, I don't have any angles. Just start by writing the whole formula out. So what do I have? I'm looking for that. I have V1 and V2, so it's just going to be V1, or we're in this medium to start with. Right? So this velocity first. 2 divided by 3 should be equal to is 0.66 recurring actually, so 0.67 more accurately. Alright, so as you can see, you can get the refractive index just by using the velocities as well. So what we've just seen there is, is that for that whole question, you could have used the velocities, you could have used the angles, but you'd have always got, depending on which way around you went, if you went from glass to air or air to glass, you'd have either got 1.5 or you'd have got the 1 over 1.5, which is 0.66. Okay? Uh, recurring. Alright, so let's try this next question. The refractive index of a material is 1.2 going from air to glass. Find the angle of incidence if the angle of refraction is 30 degrees. So I'm assuming they mean this is the angle of refraction is 30 degrees. Now what I'm doing now is just annotating the diagram. So I'm going to add a ray coming in, okay, and what I'm trying to find is this angle. And I've drawn it sort of correctly. If it's coming from the fast medium to the slow medium, it will bend towards the normal line. So going from air to plastic, you're expecting it to slow down. Um, so my annotation sort of matches what I'd expect, and that way when I get my answer, I, if I've made a silly mistake, I should be able to spot it quite easily. Right, so again, write out the entire formula. So I'm just trying to find I. I've got, uh, so I've got, I want this, 
I've got that, and I've got that. Okay, so let's just write that bit out. Sine i over sine 30 equals, and I've got 1.2 here. Okay. All right, so I need to rearrange this. I can multiply both sides by sine 30, which will cancel the sine 30 on this side and leave me with sine i is equal to 1.2 times sine 30. So now I need to, uh, on the calculator, this is where people make mistakes, on the calculator, people make mistakes with getting uh, the next steps, basically. So what I would recommend you do is calculate all this as a number, okay? And I'm going to do that now. Use your calculator and make sure you get the same answer as me. 1.2 times sine 30. Okay, and I'm getting an answer of sine i is equal to 0.6. So now I need to get i on its own. To get rid of the sine here, I could multiply it by 1 over sine. Okay, then you've got sine over sine, which cancel out or just become 1. Once 1 of i is just i. But on this side, I also need to multiply by 1 over sine. Okay, and 1 over sine, if you want your calculator to do that, basically what you'll need to do is all of this ends up being cancelled and you're left with just i. So you've got i and you need to take the inverse, the, the sine to the inverse of 0 0.6. So you need to do sine and then e equals to sine to the minus 1. This is basically what it will look like on your calculator, that button of 0 0.6. Okay, so if I just go ahead and do this, i equals and I got 36.8 or 36.89 degrees. 36. Point, if I round up, 36.9 degrees. So this angle was 36.9 degrees, which matched roughly what I expected. I expected this angle to be a bit bigger than that angle. Okay, so just one last question. The refractive index for the material is 1.2, going from air to glass, so that's all the same, the same as last time, air to glass. Find the angle of refraction if the angle of incidence is 45 degrees. The ray is coming in this way, so that angle is 45 degrees. And again, I'm just going to annotate the diagram. Um, because if you annotate diagrams, it just helps you think through what's going to happen. I'm expecting the angle to be smaller, we're going from air to glass, it's slowing down. Um, so I'm looking for this angle. Okay, so as before, every time I'm going to write out the entire formula. What do I have? I've got that. I don't have any of the velocities, but I do have angle of incidence, and I'm trying to find sine r. Oh, just r, sorry. Alright, so subbing the numbers in. Sine 45 divided by sine r should be equal to 1.2. Now I'm going to have to get sine r as the subject of the equation. There's several ways to rearrange this. If you're good at algebra, you won't have a problem, but I'll show you a way that I'll explain the way through, and it's simple enough. Basically, probably the easy thing to do is to get everything on one line. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by sine r, sine r on this side cancels. Now I've got sine 45 is equal to 1.25 times sine r. Now, to get sine r on its own, I can divide both sides by 1.2 and obviously all that's there and in the way I'm rubbing it out. So if I divide this side by 1.2 as well, 1.2 on this side cancels and I've got sine 45 divided by 1.2 is equal to sine r. Right, and again, the thing to do is on your calculator, find that as a number first. So make sure you get the same number as me. If you do sine 45 and divide it by 1.2, you should be getting a number like this, 0.5891. And if you keep it on the calculator, you can keep all the decimal places and move to the next bit. So then we're here, sine r. Again, we want to get rid of the sine on this side. And to do that, you can multiply it by 1 over sine, right? But 1 over sine on your calculator is displayed like this, sine to the minus 1. Um, so basically you're going to, uh, if, you do, if you multiply this side by 1 over sine, then that would mean that this sine here will disappear, and 
because uh, they'll cancel each other out, and you'll just basically be taking uh, the inverse of sine of 0.589. Okay, so if I do that now, I'll just put those back, bits back in to keep it true. Sine r is equal to 0.589. Taking the inverse of both sides, sine inverse of both sides, will leave me with r should be equal to. So now I'm just doing. On my calculator, I have to press second function and sine, and I get 36. 0.1 degrees, so we'll just round it down to 36 degrees. Okay, so just some final points on the difference between relative reflective, refractive index and absolute refractive index. When light travels from one medium to another, it's going to have a refractive index. And if it's, um, say, from oil to glass or from glass to air, for instance, then when you state the two materials, you're going to be calling it the re relative refractive index. In other words, like how light behaves relative uh, in glass relative to air. Right? But engineers have books of uh, refractive indexes for materials, and they don't have the refractive index for materials going from oil to glass, um, going from water to glass, and so on. They just have the refractive index going from a vacuum to glass. And when you have the refractive index going from a vacuum to glass, we call that the absolute refractive index. Uh, now, on a, another point, if you're given the, abs uh, the, re the refractive index in an exam question, then uh, if there's no other information about it telling you like it's from glass to air, for instance, then they're giving you the uh, absolute refractive index. Uh, you can also, in most cases, assume that because the speed of light in a vacuum is very close to the speed of light in air, that the absolute refractive index is true for, a, uh, for air as well. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and please subscribe, like, and share.